you here, would you sing with us about the wonderful things that God does?
I'm the God of Jacob Whose love endures to generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses The one who opened up the ocean same thing for me. Let's call out to him. We sing. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing
for always pouring your grace over us even when we feel like we might not be deserving of it God we thank you for always protecting us always being there for us in those moments that we feel so alone and so broken your grace just covers all of that thank you
to go to your small groups. Grace Kids exists to partner with you as parents to equip a new generation to love God, love others, and change their world. And I know that all of your small group leaders are so looking forward to meeting with you today. Church, we love seeing your generosity from week to week and how out of the generosity of your heart, we get to give an abundance to our community and to this church. And so as we enter into our time of tithes and offerings right now, there's just a few ways that you can do that. You can give online on the website, on the Church Center app, or if you're in person, you can give as you're leaving in the boxes at the back of the auditorium. I just love summer. And one of my favorite parts about summer is Serve the City, where we get to be the church and show Christ's love to our community. On August 6th, we'll do that in a mass group through Serve the City. That weekend, we won't have any typical services here in the Grace Building. Instead, we'll go out in teams to serve in different projects in Montrose and Olathe. We already have lots of projects planned. Everything from manual labor to cleaning up different roads to prayer teams and baking cookies and delivering them to neighbors and first responders and many more options. No matter your gifting and abilities, I guarantee there's a project you can help with. So go ahead and register on either the Church Center app or on Grace's website for the project that you would like to help with. Let's be the church together out in our community. Hi, Grace family. Summer is just around the corner, and that means that so is Camp Grace. Registration is open, so hop on the Church Center and plan to join us June 28th and 29th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Remember, this is an outreach event this year, so Camp Grace will be replacing Camp 210. We are taking camp on the road, and we'll be in Olathe at the new football field. We have such a unique opportunity to minister and bring Jesus to a whole new demographic of kiddos. We are offering Camp Grace at no cost to open the experience of Camp Grace to even more kids, but that means we need your help. If you'd like to partner with us through financial donation, please select Camp Grace in the drop-down menu when you tithe online or make a note in the memo section of your check. Or you can actually donate when you register for Camp Grace. We are so excited to see what God does through this new adventure, and we can't wait to see you there. Hey, church family. We're excited to begin a brand new series in a few weeks. 
And uh, we would love to hear your story. We would love to hear your testimony, um, how uh, you met Jesus, how you came to church, how God changed your life. And you know what? In a church our size, uh, we know there's incredible stories, powerful stories of how uh, of how God like radically changed you. Um, and we would love to hear how God is writing your life at the moment. So all you have to do, if you don't mind, uh, you just have to grab your phone and record your testimony on landscape mode, just like this, not like that, like this. If you have an iPhone, you get bonus points. If you have an Android, we're gonna be praying for you. Uh, and all you have to do, just grab your phone. Uh, you can do it on the couch, you can do it in your car, just don't drive. Once you're done recording it, come to church, find one of our production team members, and uh, we're gonna help you get it off your phone. We're excited to hear what God has done in your life, and we know your story, your testimony, is gonna bless others, and it's gonna be powerful. We're in our third week of our Stand, Fight, Win series, and Pastor Carl has a great message prepared. We can't wait to see how God moves in you through his message and worship the rest of the day. All right, so we're going to weave those uh, testimonies through this next series coming up, and um, your testimonies are powerful, and uh, we need them. And so far, we only have two, only two people. So um, it, listen, it could be a crazy testimony, or someone came to me the other night, she says, well, my testimony is so boring. I was like, that's the best kind, where you've come to Jesus, you never faltered, and you kept going. We need those testimonies too. Just keep them two minutes or less. Uh, but if you would do that, that's gonna help us minister, and you're gonna be able to minister to the rest of your brothers and sisters here, so we need your testimonies. A Couple other things I um, wanna let you know. On uh, the 24th of June, uh, we are not going to have Saturday night service. We're gonna be partnering with Habitat for Humanity doing this block party and uh, staff and everybody's going to be working over there helping just reach out to our community and care for them so join us for that it's going to be a lot of fun I think it's over on Main Street and uh, that'll be happening on the 24th uh, we will have normal Sunday services the next day and then also uh, Tracy was leading worship uh, up here uh, on the keys and um, wanted to let you know that she has come on as an associate worship leader to help alleviate all the work that Eric and John and the team have to do and so she's doing a great job so we're really excited to have her on the team. So yeah, I think we should clap about that. I think that's uh, quite a gift, quite a blessing for us. So, you know, Gina and I, we go through life uh, pretty differently. So my perspective, you know, I think of life through like goals and I think of life of dreams, you know, we're, this is where we're going. And she thinks of life as details. And this is how, well, this is what we got to do to get there. And um, a lot of times, well, I should say sometimes, my way is better, right? And so, for like example, you know, we're going to go do something, we're going to go hiking, and we're going to go out there, and Gina will be like, well, what if it rains? I'm like, we're going to wear ponchos, you know? Well, what if we get lost? We'll wrap up in space blankets, or where are we going to camp? I don't know. We're going to, we'll find it. It'll present itself. In fact, I have a, I have a rule that uh, when we're about to go anywhere on vacation, we're going to leave for a little while, it's, I call it my digit rule. And that is, uh, once we get on the main street, there's no more digits. You know, like, did you close the door? Did you get this? Did you bring that? I'm like, it doesn't matter if we did or not, we're going. And whatever we forgot, we just, let's go, we're doing it. But um, sometimes Gina's way is better, too. And sometimes details are important. I think of one time, so um, back before paddleboarding like, got crazy, before Ridgeway was covered with paddleboards, um, I was kind of getting into that. And a friend of mine uh, who goes to this church said, hey, let's go down the river. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. And, and so we went down there in Compagre, and uh, I was like, this is it. Like, I love this, because it makes like class two water feel like class four water when you're standing on a paddleboard. And so I had this little uh, idea that I even put it on uh, like a couple uh, hashtag, and it was that uh, it, the lakes are for chumps, right? And so, but like, we'll go out, and if we're gonna do this thing, we're gonna do the river. And so I got this idea. And the idea was, um, I'm going to take my whole family on a multi-day paddleboarding excursion. This is going to be awesome. And it was, this was the dream and the goal. And so, but there were some details that got in the way. So like, first of all, we only owned one paddleboard. And there's six people in my family. And, and so we scrounged up some paddleboards. And, um, you know, back then they had a bunch of the hard side ones. They weren't all inflatables like they are now. And uh, a detail, just so you know, those don't work in the river real well. And so, but I didn't know, so we brought that up. And then um, another detail uh, is that if you load a lot of gear on those paddle boards, they sink. They don't do great. They're not like a raft. And so, especially if it's a hard side one. Another detail, only three of the six of us had ever done that on a river before. The, the other three was their very first time on a river with a paddle board. 
Another detail is you should always check the water levels before you go on the river, just so you know. That's a smart thing to do. And so I'm like, we're going. And so we, we went and, you know, I launched the first kid off and then I launched the next one off and I launched Gina off and, you know, I'm going to sweep and come up at the end. And so um, I get in and my paddleboard is literally sinking. I mean, the, it's like to my ankles and I'm just like, okay, this is going to be an interesting ride, but here we go. And then um, I get around the corner and Gina is on a bush. She's just like holding a bush on the side. <laughs> And then her paddleboard is kind of pushed up against her. And then there's another kid on the other side of the river with no paddleboard at all. And then another kid that's like, I mean, it's just absolute mayhem. And it's a mess. And so I have to go and like I try to clean it all up. And we go over to Schweitzer and go on the lake. And I'm like, we're just a bunch of chumps. Here we are. But sometimes you need to know the details, you know. So here, here's the thing, though, is afterwards, I mean, I was just walking with my tail between my legs. I was so just embarrassed. I was like, man, that could have gone really, really bad. You know, I should have done that better. And it was just, I was like, forget this paddleboard and forget all of it. You know, it ever happened to you? Like, I just don't want anything to do with that anymore. And, and I've seen, actually, there's a, a number of Christians that I think are actually living right there deflated, or just apathetic, or like, you know, I'm not, I just don't want anything to do with that. Just kind of holding up, holding up, and waiting it out. Just kind of waiting till Jesus gets back. Because forget all that other stuff. It's just too much of a mess. And the details of life, the actual, you know, putting the boots to the ground and the nitty-gritty of life has just kind of sucked away your dreams, and it's sucked away your passion. And the Bible actually talks about this. If you have uh, your Bible, open it up to Romans 12. And we're going to just go verse by verse uh, through this section, really powerful section in Romans 12, verse 11. And this is what Paul challenges us and commands us. He says, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Never lacking in zeal. Now, I, I wanted to point out that idea of keep your spiritual fervor. So keep means to shepherd, to take care, to guard that actually your zeal, your passion for Jesus is something that you have to steward and you have to take care of. Because a powerful strategy, see we're talking in the Stand, Fight, Win series, we're talking about what the enemy does to come against you for what God has for your life. And we're looking at seven different strategies that he brings against you. We're looking at corresponding armor of God to help us through that. But this is a powerful strategy that he's bringing against the church right now, against you right now, is just this apathy, this retreat, this pulling back from what God is asking you to do. And one of my life goals is to bring as much glory to Jesus as I possibly can bring. I just want to lift up the name of Jesus wherever I am. So just the other, uh, yesterday, I was, uh, I cleaned up my backyard, mowed it all, and I was just sitting on my uh, little patio there with a pergola above, some shade, and I was just like, oh God, it's so beautiful outside. I'm so blessed, I'm so mm -hmm. thankful just to be here. And I just had, you ever have just like one of those little moments, just a sweet little praise moment where he came into my lunch and my time there, and I, I was just moved, I'm like, oh, I just give you all the glory, Jesus. It's so good to be yours, it's so good to be here. And so I want to bring all the personal praise that I can bring to Jesus at all moments. And see that hole in back, and, and when we hide, it, it takes away that praise that we're going to bring. And I want to lead as many other people into Jesus so they can have the life of Jesus, but also because I want more people to just praise him, more people to give him the glory that he is so worthy of. And I want to see every single one of you get as free as you possibly can be and to step into all that God has for you, for your own life, but also just because God deserves your very best. He deserves it all, unhindered, moving forward. And Satan hates that goal. He doesn't want you to bring glory. He wants you to be still. He wants to stifle you. He wants you to quiet down. He wants you to back down. He wants you just to sit down. And if he can't push you away from Jesus, he would just like you to be quiet about Jesus. And there's a lot of us that, that it's a, we, we just quit. Like we're just kind of waiting it out. Come on, Jesus, come back. But we got a lot of work to do there. We got a lot of work to do before he comes back. Think about the last time you quit. You know, there, there's a good way to quit and there's a bad way to quit. There's good reasons to quit and there's bad reasons to quit. I found a little thing from Steve Harvey um, here. Uh, this is a guy I think he's quitting pretty well. Let's go ahead and play that. Excuse me, everybody. Derek, Jake, everyone. I got an announcement to make, and I got my friends here to help me out. 
guys. Hit it. Shoot by the doo Shoot by the doo I am quitting this job today. Hey, hey, hey. I'm leaving. Even though I might be here when the start of the doo doo we're gonna make it to the top and start the coffee shop. Right, so that's a good way to quit, right? And then there's bad ways to quit. But here, here's the thing. If God has given you a directive, do you know what you do? You keep going I, until he tells you to do something else. If it's hard or it's disappointing or it doesn't work, you keep going until he tells you to do something else. Now, there's a time to quit, and that's when he's directing you to a new thing, when he says it's time. And I want to tell you, listen, if you are here and you go to another church, I want to tell you, don't come here until you're sure that he's calling you here, until you've worked it out back there. If you're leaving because you're mad or things just didn't go your way or you're frustrated, I want to tell you, go work it out, then come, all right? If you don't have a church home, glad that you're here. And if God's calling you here, I'm glad that you're here. You're more than welcome. But we just don't quit because it didn't work out. We keep going forward. Things don't work out all the time. You know, why, why do we quit? Well, usually, isn't it frustration? You know, I tried so hard, and it just didn't work. People didn't do what I expected them to do. It didn't, it, my expectations weren't met in the midst of it. Or, you know, I care so much, and apparently nobody else does, and it just doesn't matter. Or I hoped, and it's not really changing anything. It's not doing what I wanted to do. Or fear. Some of us don't even just, we don't even step in because we're afraid. Oh, it's going to require too much of me. I'm too busy. There's too much going on. I, I can't do it, so why should I even start? Or this might hurt, so I'd rather just stay safe. Or is it really worth it? And I'm a little concerned that it's just working, that the enemy strategy is working at a time where we need to be rising up and stepping in more than ever in history. Many of us are just kind of like waiting this thing out, and the enemy wants you to give up because he wants to rob God of any of the glory that he can. And he wants to rob you of the life that comes from stepping into the joy that he has for you. He wants to rob you from your call and rob you from your efficacy, and rob you from the fruit that God wants to bring. And I wanna show you a promise from heaven. This is the only time we're gonna leave Romans here. We'll go to Galatians for just a second. You probably know this passage, or many of you do. Galatians 6, 9 through 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now I want you to understand, this is not just like a little inspirational quote. It's not just a little thing like, oh yeah, okay, now I feel better. This is a promise of God. If you keep going in the proper time, you will reap a harvest. You will see fruit. This is God's promise to you. If you quit, you won't see it. But if you keep going forward, if you keep your zeal, if you refuse to become weary and just keep doing it, you will see a harvest. So therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You have to understand that nothing done by his spirit, nothing done in obedience through his spirit is ever pointless, no matter how it ends. No matter what happens, there is a purpose and there's a plan and there's a work that God is doing. Even if you look at it and say, that was a disaster. Jim Elliott, I think, I mean, that's the quintessential example. So you may know about him. If you uh, saw Tip of the Spear, that movie is about him. So he's a missionary. He goes down to Ecuador to minister to the Wagani people. And he knows, before he goes down, him and Nate Saint and the whole group, they, they know that these, this tribe, this unreached people group, that, that they kill people, outsiders. 
They've been killing the, the oil men who come in and anyone who comes into their area. And so he knows he's got to build bridges. So they have this plane and this big bucket and they deliver, they figure out a way to deliver uh, gifts and things down to this tribe through the plane. And it seems like they're making connections so they land and actually one of the tribe members comes to greet them and they take the tribe member around for a, a ride and he's waving to the rest of his tribe as he's in their airplane. So they're like, okay, it's time. I think we, we've made it. I think we're getting in here. And so they land the plane, and then they go in to meet the tribe. And as they're going, they see two women across the river, and so they go to greet the women. But what they don't know is there's an ambush behind them, and the warriors pop up and kill every single one of them. Now, was that a waste? Was it pointless? Well, I mean, here we are talking about it right now, right? I mean, so we know it. One thing, if nothing else, it has inspired millions of people of how we go forward. But, but then you know what? It didn't end right there. If you know the rest of the story, you know that his wife, Elizabeth, goes to the same people, bringing her daughter on her back, who's a baby, Valerie comes with her, and goes and ministers to this very tribe and leads most of them to Jesus. And now you could, uh, you could Google uh, Steve Saint. That's Nate Saint's son. And you can look at the, you can actually watch right now if you want to today. You can go and you can watch him on stage. He does this speaking tour with one of the tribesmen. And he's standing there on stage with a guy who came to Jesus who happened to be one of the guys who killed his dad. But came to Christ. It's never pointless in Jesus. And it's Nate Saint who gives us, excuse me, Jim Elliott who gives us that amazing quote. He says, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. It's always worth it in Christ. All right, let's keep moving on. Let's look at our, our next verse back in Romans, picking up right where we left off. So the next verse, verse 12, says, share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. See, this is, this is the heart of someone who's not holding back. When we engage, we have plenty to give. When we retreat, we have to hold on to everything that is ours, right? And Jesus is telling us, open up our hearts, open up our lives, practice hospitality. This is the key to staying engaged. This is a key to, to, to being effective. And it's simply this, the joy that we have in Jesus. There is so much joy. You know, your joy, did you know it's a weapon? Do you know that joy actually brings strength? And you have to understand that joy, it's not found in your circumstances. We don't go get joyful because things are working or because that what we hope for takes effect here. Joy for us is found in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, that he is always working, that he's always with us, and he will always win. Is there anyone here besides me who's feeling a little hopeless about our nation, about our world, about our culture, about the, our children and our future. Well, I want to tell you, listen, if you are angry and you're afraid and you're hopeless and you're ineffective, you are right where the enemy wants you to be. He wants to push you back. It's hopeless. It's worthless. There's nothing you can do. This great wave that's coming against you is going to swallow you up. No, no, see, we have such a powerful hope in Jesus. And it brings strength it brings joy, but you know what mostly it brings? It brings action. To know, yeah, okay, you, you come against me with that, but I know that we are going to move forward. We're going to see God move in the midst of it. And there's no doubt things are going crazy around us. Franklin Graham, he was just at the National Religious Broadcasters Association. I think it was two or three weeks ago. And this is what he said. And I personally, I, I think he's right. Franklin Graham, son of Billy, says this, every demon from hell has been turned loose in our culture today. There's a storm coming, and we all have got to be prepared. Do you know what that tells me? I think it says that the enemy knows his time is short. And he's not playing his best card. He's playing his last card. See, his best card is to just sow little bits of doubt. His best card is to stay unseen and just to keep chipping away at you and just keep working on your heart and keep working these doubts until you just slowly fade away. I mean, that's how he got Europe, right? See, but this is his last card. He's in our face. And I want to remind you, God, in the middle of it, is on the move. That God is working, and God is going forward. Do you know how many Christians there were in China 40 years ago? 
One million. Do you know how many Christians there are in China right now, today? A hundred million. God is on the move. You know, yeah, praise God. Do you know that there's, uh, there's fewer atheists today than there were in 1970? Do you know that uh, you know, the 20 uh, countries uh, that are growing quickest in Christianity, of the 20 fastest growing Christian countries, do you know that 11 of them are Muslim nations? God is moving. Do you know that Nepal is the fastest converting nation in the world? And that every year we're seeing 11% of the population come to Jesus? There's 2.6 billion Christians in the world today, and if we keep going at the exact same rate that we are going right now, in 2050 there will be 3.3 billion Christians. God is on the move. Now how about right here in our midst? You know, I meet with the pastors and we pray a couple times a week together. And, and these guys, what they've told me, I, I don't know if it's true in every case, but what I keep hearing over and over again is our church is growing. God is doing things. It's not just here that it's happening. It's in this city that God is doing things. He's going forward right now. How about our youth? They were just up at camp. The middle schoolers were up at camp. And I've heard reports of like a bunch of middle schoolers just crying because they were just overwhelmed with the presence of God. I mean, that's what we prayed for, right? My daughter called me up, called us up in tears. And, and we're like, well, are you okay? What, what, what's going on? She's like, no, I, I'm meeting Jesus. Praise the Lord. God is on the move. So Franklin Graham, he gives us a solution. This is what he says in the midst of this. He says, listen, this is what you do. Preach. Preach. Don't back up. Don't make excuses. We cannot back up. We cannot retreat. Don't apologize for the gospel. Just declare it. Just preach it. And see, don't let these little small things in your circumstances, the small disappointments in our small world, interrupt your understanding of the great work that God is doing in his big plan. The last thing for us to do is to quit. The last thing is to retreat. The last thing is just to kind of grump around and despair. It's time now for us to rise up in joy because we will win. God is winning and victory is yours. And yes, praise God, expect, expect the enemy to intimidate you. Expect the enemy to come against you. Expect him to threaten you. Expect him to discourage you. Expect him to try to get you to lose heart. That's what he's doing. That's his strategy. Expect attacks and expect judgment. Expect people to misunderstand you and things not to work out. And expect this world to be more worldly and to be more crazy. And as they turn from God and away from him in our local area and in this nation, expect more confusion around us. But I'll tell you what, even in that, God is using that for a shaking. Do you remember the beginning of this year, what we said our theme was as a church? God is asking of us, it's focused. We're staying focused. We're just keeping after Jesus. We're looking at Jesus, all sorts of stuff going on, but we're gonna keep looking at Jesus. Keep moving forward in him. Let's look at the next verses here, verse 13. And it says, share with God's people who are in need. See, it's just an abundance and a giving. Practice hospitality. This is powerful. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I know many of us feel persecuted. Listen, there is resistance coming against what we believe. There's resistance coming against the truth. And what does it say? Get mad. Get angry. Fight. Bless those who persecute you. Those who are on the other side of the aisle, bless those. Those who are on the other side of the issue, bless those. Do not curse. What a powerful, powerful tool. What a weapon God has given us. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. What a packed passage there. We could spend weeks just on everything that we could pull out of that. That'd be a good one to spend some time in this week and dig a little deeper. But you know what joy does? It blesses those who curse us. Joy rises above. That's what a person does who knows what they are, who knows what God does. I've got my, uh, my fourth daughter going through middle school right now. I've taken four of them through middle school. And every single one of them, 
I, I, every single one of my, at least for, maybe this is just the Lloydhauser thing, but there's this kind of group that they want to be in and they can't quite get in. And they're just kind of like right underneath that group, right? And, and, and I've, always, I've tried to teach every single one of them, actually, you're not trying to fit into that group. Actually, that's not where you want to go. What you want to do is turn the other way and love the people who don't feel loved at all. Girls, listen to me. I mean, this is, I tell them over and over again, love the people who are outcasts. Love the unlovable. See, Jesus has given you your identity. He's given you everything you need. You don't need to be up there. You need to be over here with them. We're not trying to fit in, guys. We're, we're trying to love the misfits. We are not trying to be comfortable in this world. We are trying to change this world. And I don't know, Christians, I, I think we've got distracted. And we thought that it was about you know, us going out and playing, and you're welcome to play. It's good. I love to play. I love to go have adventures. But that's not why I'm here. It's not for your view. It's not for your neighborhood. It's not for your house. It's not for any of those things. It's not for your job. It's not for your career. You are here for the glory of Jesus Christ. You're here to see his kingdom come and his will be done. Such purpose we have. And you know why a lot of us has lost our zeal? It's because we lost our purpose. We're like, we're going after just kind of our own comfort. And we're like, wow, this is really unfulfilling. Exactly. Exactly. It will be unfulfilling. There's only one that fulfills. It's Christ. And it's to live according to the call and purpose he has for us. No wonder we lose our zeal. I'm going to show you 17 and 18 here. This is one of my favorite passages. This is one that I would encourage you uh, to, to memorize. So going on, it says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of everybody. And I love this next verse because it's just so freeing. It's a great way to live life. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And here's the thing, is, is if it's possible. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes people will not have peace with you. But there's so much freedom here because you know what it says? It says, do what you can do. And then they're going to do what they're going to do. And you don't have to be mad about it. And you don't have to be hurt by it. You can't make anybody do anything, right? You can't make this world shape up. But just as far as possible, bring peace. As far as possible, live in peace. As far as possible, make peace. And so I'll reach, and I'll love, and I'll try, and then you know what? They're going to do what they're going to do. And the world's going to do what it's going to do. And I don't have to get pouty about it. And I don't have to be mad that they didn't respond like I wanted them to. That's their deal. My deal is to just do my job and to keep doing my job. And see, there's this attack of apathy and fear and quitting. But see, God's given us some armor for that. It's the feet fit with the readiness of the gospel of peace. See, and, and, and their feet, their shoes, their boots, which means they're meant to move. The gospel of peace is meant to move. It's meant to go forward. It doesn't just sit down or sit back. It takes enemy territory. Wherever you go, you bring the gospel of peace with you to increase the glory to the name of Jesus Christ, to bring his kingdom into every sphere and every situation that you go to. And I know that, that you, you had this idea or we stepped out or we thought or maybe we hoped and, 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 and it didn't work because somebody complained or something resisted or just, it just didn't work, right? Listen, there are things that I do here that don't work all the time. I've had some really, really bad ideas, and the staff faithfully tried to carry them out. And they didn't work. You know why? Because it was a bad idea. And no amount of professionalism or work that they could do could make the bad idea a good idea. I mean, I've done plenty of that, right? And I've started so many groups that didn't work. And I just don't take it personally anymore. It's like, well, that one didn't work. Let's try this one. And when they work really, really well, I don't take the credit for it either. What I do is, am I obedient to what God is asking me to do, or am I not? That's the question. And Gene and I, we've launched out groups that have multiplied from us, and some of them have taken off and they're still going, and some of them just kind of uh, fizzled. And we keep going. You know, the, this church, since I've been here, in the 16 years that I've been here, this church has had no less than three campuses that we've tried to plant that didn't work. And I've been misunderstood. I mean, I've had people tell me before that, oh, all you care about is money and attendance. I'm just like, you, you don't know me. You don't know me at all that you would say that, right? 
There, there are people who go here and, and that they've told me that, you know, before I came here, I thought you were all style and no substance. And I'm like, I know. I know. Not the first time I heard that one. I had a guy in my office, like, he was just, like, straight to my face. He told me, you're apostate. If you don't know what that is, if you're not in the church, that's bad. That's not a good thing, right? I've had more emails and more letters about complaints and criticisms than, than I can even count. Listen, I have cried bitter tears as I've gone through horrible issues and difficult issues with staff. And I've had people tell me, Carl, you messed that up. And the truth is, is all I could say is, yeah, I did. But what am I going to do? I'm going to quit? What am I going to do? I'm going to stop serving Jesus? I'm going to stop obeying? I'm going to walk away from the thing that he called me to do? I'm going to stop serving? I mean, is that what Jesus did? He, he has five, maybe 10,000 people listening to him. On his every, every, word, every word, they're just waiting. And he gives this sermon about how, well, you've got to eat my body and, and you have to drink my body my blood, and they all leave. You know how many are left? Twelve. Twelve people is all that remains. Did Jesus quit? You know, he was, he was stabbed in the back by someone whose feet that he washed, someone he had communion with, someone that he ministered with, and did Jesus quit? And the religious leaders, I mean, constantly criticized him and attacked him and pointed at him and, and rejected him, and did he quit? And people hated him. And Jesus went to the cross. Oh, I'm so thankful that he didn't quit. And I want to tell you something. I am going to keep walking forward with my Lord until he tells me to stop or until my legs don't work anymore. And I'm going to obey the call of Jesus Christ to preach his goodness and tell this world till no one's listening or my mouth doesn't work anymore. I am not going to quit. I am going forward with my Christ. And here is my reason. Here is my a- answer to apathy. Here is my answer to shrieking back. Here is my answer to this difficulty. Listen, you know why I can't quit? Because Jesus is king. He's not a good idea. He's not just like, well, it's something that improves my life. I have given my, I have pledged my soul and my life into service to him. He is my king. He is my Lord. And I don't stop until the king says I stop. I'm taking my orders from him. He's leading us forward. Church, listen, this is our season. This is our time. This is our day to overcome. And when he calls you, you say yes, because he's the boss. And when he points forward, you go, because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and we're just his servants. And it could all just go to pot, and it could just be horrible and nothing that you wanted. But if he wants to take me through the valley of the shadow of death, guess where I'm going? Here we go, Jesus because you're the king, you're the Lord, and it's time that our lives just raise a hallelujah in every difficulty, that we give him praise, we give him glory, no matter where he takes us, because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So let's stand up right now, and let's just give glory, let's give hallelujah, let's give praise to our great king.
a hallelujah to you. I pray, Lord, that we would live a hallelujah, that we would be a hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for, I think, anybody right now, if you would say, I want more. I want more of what God has for me. I want to step into more of what God wants for me. I just want you to put your hands up before you just bow your heads right now if that's you. Okay, there's three things that I'm going to pray for you. The first one is I'm going to pray for a dream. I'm going to pray for his vision. And the next thing, I know God's going to give you one of these things. He might give you all three of these. And then, so the first one is a dream. The second one is power. That you need his power to do that, to accomplish his will. And the third is place. There's somewhere, there's just, you just need to know where you're supposed to say yes. And I want to tell you, little yeses are going to lead to big changes in your life. So Holy Spirit, we just ask right now, you see these hands, Lord. These are people who want more, Lord. And I know that they're pleasing to you, Lord. I know that you want to give them more. And so, Lord, Holy Spirit, right now, would you release a dream? Lord, would you release dreams, Lord? We just bless your people right now with vision and dreams, Lord. You say in the last days that you're going to pour out dreams, Lord. You're going to pour out visions. And, Lord, would you just pour out dreams for our lives, Lord, your plans for our lives. Just right now, pour it out, Jesus. And now, God, there's, we need power in order to accomplish your will. So those with their hands up, Lord, I just pray that, Lord, release, Holy Spirit, release power. Release the power to accomplish what you have for us, God. It's by your power. Not by might, not by strength, but by your spirit. So, Lord, release your spirit, release your power to accomplish your will. And now, Lord, I pray that you release the third thing, that you would release place. God, show us just those little places to say yes. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be difficult. Just little places every day, Lord, to say yes to your will, yes to your kingship. And we declare right now, Lord, that you are God. We declare, Jesus, that you are king. So we will obey you. We will follow you. We say yes to you, God, because you're in charge and we serve you. Lord, thank you for inviting us into this. Release life, release power, release dreams, release yes in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do. We love you so much. Just walk in his power. Walk in his boldness. Don't back down. Now is the time to rise up. I want to pray for anybody who needs prayer. Um, I especially feel like we're to pray this weekend for people with um, intestinal problems. Um, Crohn's disease is another thing. Just anything like that. Diverticulitis. We want to pray for those things. Uh, God just put on my heart. Okay, love you guys. Have a great week. Thank you guys so much for joining us this weekend at Grace Online. We'll see you next week at the same time, same place. And just a reminder, you can follow us through all of our social platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also register online through the Church Center app for any upcoming events or small groups. You can also give through the Church Center app or online through Grace's website. You are some of the most generous people we know, and we celebrate what God is doing through your faithfulness in this way. Have a great week.
Thank you guys so much for joining us this weekend at Grace Online. We'll see you next week at the same time, same place. And just a reminder, you can follow us through all of our social platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also register online through the Church Center app for any upcoming events or small groups. You can also give through the Church Center app or online through Grace's website. You are some of the most generous people we know, and we celebrate what God is doing through your faithfulness in this way. Have a great week.
Thank you guys so much for joining us this weekend at Grace Online. We'll see you next week at the same time, same place. And just a reminder, you can follow us through all of our social platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also register online through the Church Center app for any upcoming events or small groups. You can also give through the Church Center app or online through Grace's website. You are some of the most generous people we know, and we celebrate what God is doing through your faithfulness in this way. Have a great week.